And welcome to Bench Monster TV. I'm Ashley Lynn Condre. And I am the Bench Monster. How is everybody doing this evening? Thank you for joining us. Always good to have you guys here. We have a very special guest this evening. Yeah, very excited. We got We're Amber Hansen excited. waiting in the wings. Um, let's not waste any time. No. Let's, get, let's move let's right get her in. On here. Got a little introduction here and a little video I'm going to play. Then we'll bring her on and we will start asking her the questions that the Bench Monster TV question answer you miss ashley will do i will yes okay I will, I will ask uh, let's go name. ahead let me put my image up and we'll start to roll our next guest is an equipped and raw power lifter that competes as a 198 and super heavyweight she lives and trains in washington dc her home gym is in dayton ohio the dirty gym she's been competing since 2016 and currently has the number five ranked highest raw total of all time at 198 and the second highest multiply total of all time at 198. This past year, she got to compete on the three largest stages in powerlifting, raw, raw with wraps and multiply, qualifying and placing at the Kern US Open, the WPO and the Showdown. When she's not lifting heavy, she's off roller skating, cuddling with her dogs or off flying a desk for the Air Force. Without further to do, let's bring in Amber Hansen. Hello, Amber. Hi, Amber. Hello. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. I was watching it as you guys were doing it. Oh, like, oh this is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of put together a little intro video. I was trying to find some lifting yeah, stuff from you. Awesome. And, yeah, Amazing. that was awesome. Was that okay? Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that was so cool. Oh, you're awesome. welcome. Um, so as you know, we have a lot of questions, so let's get rocking, Amber. So we won't so, waste. I'm ready time. to answer. Okay. Excellent. So, did you play any sports in high school? If so, which ones? And did you lift back then? So, I played played lots of sports in high school. I grew up as a kid doing figure skating, um, which is kind of an odd one. And then in high school, I did track and field, basketball, and cheerleading. Nice. And then a little bit of track and field in college. And then I did some lifting. Um, like typical weight room bro stuff, lifting for sports. Um, my dad was a power lifter, so he was always trying to get me in there at high school. Um, but yeah, th those are my, my high school sports. Oh, cool. Okay, very cool. Um, how much did you squat bench and deadlift in high school? Oh, Lord, I have no <laughs> idea. Um, <laughs> probably like a plate, <laughs> a plate squat, maybe a plate deadlift, and then who knows? I don't think I even benched, which is... Ugh, blasphemy yeah i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so um when and which powerlifting meet was your first so my first powerlifting meet was in 2016 and i believe it was a it was a local uspa meet in my home gym in dayton ohio um yeah 2016 okay, okay. and I probably should have asked this question first. I don't know if somebody got the questions out of order, but when and how did you get into powerlifting? A bit of a question. Um, so I started lifting um, when I was outstationed in New Mexico. I was playing roller derby out there and wanted to lift to get stronger for that. And then, you know, started doing squat benching and deadlifting and decided, man, this is actually pretty fun. Then moved to Ohio, found a gym there that was a, like an actual barbell club, joined them, and then uh, was in a, my first competition in a couple of months. So oh, it wow. happened pretty quickly, but it was awesome. Excellent. Very cool. So what were your numbers at your first powerlifting meet? <laughs> this one I had to look up because um, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, and I still, I should have wrote them down, but I did not. I, I believe I squatted like 280 something benched 160 something whatever the kilo conversion is and then i deadlifted i think 350 to 370 oh, wow really rough yeah. <laughs> rough estimates there that was pretty solid for your first meet ever though that's not bad i, I had some good bad. genetics from my dad so i thank him for that <laughs> I say that's a, yeah it's a pretty strong start there i know that you're like way beyond that now but that's still a pretty you know great start okay Thanks. um how did you feel about it after that first meet and were you hooked immediately? Oh yeah. Yeah. After that first meet, it was just, I mean, not even the first meet after I started training at my gym with like the rest of the team and the crew with powerlifting specifically, 
Like I was hooked before I even hit the platform and was just so amped to try and like, okay, what can I do now? What am I capable of? How do I build this up? Um, so yeah, I was, I was really, really pumped for it even before I competed. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm as she's talking. I'm going to write down a few questions that I want to okay, ask. Okay, so like, why are you still yeah. in my paper? Okay, sorry. Follow-ons. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's a good idea. Um, did you start out equipped or raw? I started out raw. Um, I was raw for I think two or three years before I slapped on some equipment. Man. Okay. Who got you into powerlifting? Is there anybody specifically? Oh man, I there's a couple of people that I could credit. I I think I'd be I'd be messed up if I didn't say my dad though, because he like he didn't do it. Like it took a few years for me to realize that I actually wanted to do it, but he was the one in my ear from like high school saying, "Uh, you should be lifting weights. Pretty sure you should be lifting weights. Maybe you want to try this." And I was like, "Ew, no, I don't want to do that." I don't want to get bulky. I just want to tone <laughs> <laughs> that type of stuff. Right, so right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Dad was the biggest influence there. Okay, okay. Um, what are your best equipped lifts? Uh, best equipped is my squat seven sixty five, bench four thirty five, and then deadlift five. 560. Yeah, good lord, lady. I think. That's yeah, multi, that was multiply this past year at the WPO. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. What, what about your best raw lifts? Um, the last meet, I think my best squat and wraps was five, 529, 523. And then sleeves was 479. And then my raw bench is 330, and my raw deadlift is 529. Wow. <laughs> Those too many numbers to keep track of, y'all. <laughs> that's, yeah, man. <laughs> like Rain Man, just like Carrie Lawn. That's, that's really amazing that you can be so good at both of them. That's incredible. Um, let's see here. Which of the three lifts, squat, bench, or deadlift, are your favorite? Is your favorite? Is it like, am I even allowed to say anything other than bench on Bench Monster? I lying. would be totally okay with it. Everybody knows I hate bench. She so hates you're... Bench. Okay. So, right now, okay, if you ask me today, right now in this moment, because it changes right. depending on which one's going well, like bench right now, and actually for the past year, I would say bench is my favorite, favorite lit out of the three. Okay. Okay. Yay. <laughs> squats, squats still a very close second. But like bench has been been the baby for a little while. Okay, okay. Um, what was one of your favorite, most memorable meet, powerlifting meets? Uh, okay, probably the first time I did the women's pro am. Mm, I thought that was, and good. that like that meet was the one that I went to, and I saw two full days of women lifting, both raw and equipped, and I'm like. I had no idea that we had this many female lifters that could like fill up a whole meet and like have an entire packed gym in there, like watching, cheering. And like, it was just the, the energy was incredible. That meet every year is like one of my favorites ever. So the first time I did that, that was probably, I could say that's my favorite meet I've ever done. Okay. Yeah. I got that one's a really cool one. Oh, it's a blast. Oh, I bet. So many amazing lifters there, huh? That's very cool. Hell yeah. Uh, I would love to go to that one. Yeah. Um, what was one of your least favorite powerlifting meets? One of your <laughs> worst experiences? <laughs> I saw this question on there and I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what's <laughs> on. Um, Usually... And then I had to think about it and I'm like, do I want to talk? But like, yeah, I do. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it was, it was very long time ago. It was one of the, like, within my first or second year of lifting, I went to USAPL military nationals and just <laughs> had, had a terrible time. It was the first time I ever did a two hour weigh in. I cut to 84 kilos and they were like, Oh, we don't like the length of this. That's not a, you know, appropriate labeled wrist wrap or whatever. Oh, gosh, and like, yeah. we use this. Like have fun with a, 
like pulling on a straight bar and walking everything out. I was like, man, this sucks. I did (laughs) not have fun. Like 10 out of 10, not doing it again. That was the first and last USAPL meet I did. (laughs) Yeah. Like, all right, check that box. We're moving on. I did not like it, huh? Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. (laughs) Did you still hit, I mean, anywhere near the numbers you wanted? I'm sure you still like kicked ass. I, I think I did okay. I think I won my weight class and won like, I think I placed top three overall. Like I was really happy with, I think it's cool that they did. They had an entire meet just for like military and like first responder, like just anyone in general, they set aside a whole meet for that, which was really cool. But um, yeah, like performance was all right. Just, just didn't like all the, the experience rules and was the, yeah. meh. Yeah, it was like watching or like going to a, like golf too. Like, no, there was no, no music. music. No. There, I mean, not that there was like needs to be music, but there's got to be something. Like the crowd was dead, and like this is really kind of <laughs> kind of demoralizing. <laughs> walking up the like, I'm not excited to lift here. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, but funny. yeah, like pick, pick your meets wisely. Pick meets that you have fun at. <laughs> that's my advice. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the most impressive, memorable feats of strength that you have witnessed for squat bench and or deadlift? Oh, I saw this one on there too. And this was an easy one right off the bat because I just did the showdown and I got to watch Tamara Walcott pull pull the heaviest deadlift of all time, female Mm -hmm. um, raw, which was, I think, 636 in person and that was just it was so incredible like she came off the platform screaming and like people were crying and everyone was just like so and it was the last lift of the day heaviest lift of the day and she just went up there and crushed it and I like I'm getting goosebumps right now just talking about (laughs) it but yeah like that one was really cool to see in person um yeah yeah and Didn't we have yeah. that video on the show last week? I don't know if it was last week, but we had we, 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 we had, had that had video. It, yeah. yeah, I put that on the show. Yeah, that was amazing. I didn't mean to interrupt. But... Yeah, no, you're good. She's like she's crushing out. Like she just got invited to be on Ellen. I think. Oh, that, I heard like, that there was a, a female, female powerlifter power on Ellen. It was it was wow. that her? Oh wow, that is yeah. really cool. Like how huge is that huge. for us? For the sport in general. Oh, yeah, that's wow. amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. That was real exciting. Got to see it in person. That's really cool. Yeah. What injuries, if any, have you had to deal with throughout your career, and how how did you recover from them? Mm, I got to find some wood to knock on <laughs> here because the answer is none. Um, so, so thankfully, none. Um, I I always have my little tweaks mm-hmm. and things that are you know annoying but no like major like knee blowouts or hip injuries or like back injuries or anything so like my coach and I are really really meticulous about rotating things when we need to rotate them and we communicate really well so if something's feeling weird and I tell him he's like okay let's switch to a different bar like you got a bicep shoulder thing let's do the safety squat bar or let's not do some full range of motion bench presses instead we'll we'll do some partial ranges so yeah, try to avoid those like the plague. Yeah. You must be training super smart to like be hitting the numbers and doing the things you're doing without getting any injuries. So that's very, yeah, that's I, I, an impressive. Oh, my coach for that. He's <laughs> very, very good at keeping an eye on me because I'll go like ham if you let me. Right. <laughs> you got to have somebody to rein you back in. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. What are some of your best training lifts? squat bench and or deadlift it can be max singles or it can be like you know a heavy weight for a certain amount of reps just whatever you're um really proud of training i just did that um 685 do a three board in the the pharrell which that one was really cool that was freaking wild that was this probably the scariest lift i've ever done in my life because i'm like this is we're near my multiply squat territory (laughs) over my over my face That's crazy. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> that one was pretty cool and then there was one okay so this was years ago and it was one of those like stupid setups like 
ridiculous overload setup. And my coach was like, yeah, let's just do it for fun. It's the off season. So the entire crew did like high box squat, full gear with a reverse. Bench. Oh my God. <laughs> and just to see like how much we could get on there. I think I got up to like nine twenty, oh, and I was pretty, <laughs> but like part of me, I was like, well, I've it felt really awful on the pick. And then the bands help you down. You're in full gear. The box is high and everything. So I like always kind of discredit myself on that mm-hmm. one. But when I look back, I'm like, that was still pretty cool. It's like, insane. I like doing yeah. that. That's an insane amount. Of those life. are probably my, my two cool ones that I, I really liked doing. Yeah, those are, those are incredible. What does a week of training look like for you? Like, what's your split? Mm. Um, so we're a little different cause I'm in off season and also the, the goal right now is training for a bench only. So there's a lot more upper work than there normally would be for me. So I'm, I'm still four days a week total. I'm in Wednesday for some sort of, um, like deadlift work, high reps Thursday for some sort of upper, whether it be like a shoulder split and then some raw benching. Um, and then Saturday's equipped day. So I'm in a shirt for some sort of variation. And then a lot of either like upper back hypertrophy or tricep lockout work after that. And then Sunday is usually squat work. So we've been working a lot with like the SSB and lots of, um, like low percentage high rep stuff to kind of iron out some of the like form kinks that have developed over the past year or so. So I've gotten some weird, weird habits I picked up. I don't know where they're from that I'm trying to break. <laughs> so that's that's what the week is is all about for me now. Okay, okay. What is the best advice lifting wise anyone has ever given you, and who was that person? Oh, this one was really hard when I saw it, <laughs> and I wasn't. I wasn't sure. Like I had a couple of folks running around in my head, um, but some of it is like inappropriate advice. So I decided to discount those ones. <laughs> um, <laughs> like uh, maybe not that one, um, but uh, like uh, who, who was I going to mention? Donnie Thompson. We had had a chance to go link up with him not too long ago and like go train at the shed. And he sat down, we had dinner he gave us some really good advice at just like protecting your own like integrity and like staying true to like the things that you want to do and doing it your way and not really giving a crap what other people are thinking or or, or, like their input. Like, yeah, obviously if you respect their input, whatever you can take it, take it with a grain of salt. Um, But like do it for you, like be selfish sometimes because I'll, I'll fall into this trap of like giving, giving, giving to like the people I coach or to my friends or like everything else, but like focusing on me. Um, and that is a really good piece of advice because you'll get into it and you'll just like drain yourself dry because the sport will absolutely take from you. Um, <laughs> it's so we pay for it. Like we don't get paid to do this. Right. Um, so his advice was just to be a little selfish if you need to and uh, don't let it drain you dry. So I thought that was pretty good advice. And I always, every time I think I'm overextending myself or like pushing too hard with things that don't directly deal with me, but like I want to help. um, I'm like, okay. Remember what Donnie said. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. Good. That's really good advice. Super D. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. What powerlifting gear do you use? All of it, all any of it, <laughs> <laughs> any any and all, all of the gear. You don't have a specific <laughs> like it. suit or a shirt that um, you like best. Oh yeah, <laughs> I uh, so I squat in my Inzer Leviathan Ultra Pro, yep. which is the lace up yep. guy, and then I squat with a pair of Predators underneath, um, just grid stitch Preds. Um, multi ply, I bench in the single ply Super Katana, or sorry, not multi ply. Um, Equipped, I bench in the single, single ply super katana. I also am in the super duper phenom from Enzer and then uh, unlimited the Pharrell F8. Oh, nice. um, and then I just I deadlifted my Leviathan Ultra Pro as well, so I just laced that thing up 
no briefs and those that's that's my my typical setup depending on what what the intent of the workout is or what competition i have coming up okay what is something about you that would surprise everyone (laughs) this one wasn't on the list guys no really well i don't know if it was was it it should have been but i i don't know no, it's fine. Blame I'll it on Ryan. It off the cuff. Something about me that would surprise people. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty open about everything on the internet. Um, like, you can't think of anything. I can. I, yeah, I can't, I can't really think of anything. Um, it's fine. If something floats, if something sorry. floats into to your head I'll earlier, feel okay, free okay. to come back to it. But no pressure. If Ryan, well, okay. I'm, I'm assuming I, Ryan left first, it off. So that's my first inclination was to make like a fart joke or something. So I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, we're all good with I'm fart like, jokes well, here. But, and then I'm like, okay, people already know that. That's not something that's surprising. <laughs> like, okay. I'll think about okay. it though. <laughs> we come back to that. Okay. One. Okay. Did you leave that off? No, I, that was on sure? there. Yeah. Nobody's in trouble. Oh, you guys are fine. <laughs> I'm good with throwing him under the bus. That's that's my go-to. Okay. <laughs> um, I have these on here. I was going to skip them because they're kind of stupid, but they're on here. So do you use pre-workout? If so, which one? Ryan always throws that one. I do not use any pre-workout. Um, I used to a lot. I used to, I used to like the ghost pre-workout, but like um, – I just, I I train later and I couldn't fall asleep. So that was a really big issue for me. So I stopped with the pre-workout. I'll drink like an energy drink on my way to the gym though. So I'll, I'll drink like a bang, which still is a crap ton of caffeine, (laughs) but like for whatever reason, it's not, it's not quite the same, not as, yeah, not as aggressive as like a scoop of pre. Right. Right. What's your favorite flavor bang drink? Ooh. Okay. Um, the one that I just it's like I think it's either strawberry delight or strawberry delicious. I just saw it's that all one. pink and orange. Yeah. Oh, it's it's good. brand new, yeah. It's really oh, good. I don't think I've tried that uh, one. Oh my goodness. I walked right by him the other day. Yeah. I always pick up the uh dream sickle, orange dream sickle. That's our favorite. Yeah. That's rain. I like that's that one. one. That's rain. Oh, yeah. oops. Yeah. I do like that that's one a my lot. Favorite. Though. Yeah, try the strawberry delight delish one. It tastes like strawberry shortcake. It's oh, real good. Yeah. Okay. Got a new one to try. And it's bang, not rain, right? It's bang. It's bang. It is bang. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Got to try a new bang here. Um, and then the other one. Um, what type of music do you listen to during training? Ooh. Um. So I'm probably an anomaly because I don't listen to music during training. I don't do the headphones thing. I don't. Like I try not to pay attention to music during training. So we were kind of brought up in our gym without it. Um, and it was just kind of something that I stuck with. So I don't, it's nice when it's there. It's cool. But like, I'm more of the type that'll listen to music that'll get me excited on the drive to the gym, yeah. not in the gym. Okay. If that makes sense. Oh, totally. um, I'm sure other people do. If that makes sense. People do that all the time. It's not fancy. <laughs> Um, but I'm I'm all about like I like hardcore music I like metal I like some rap here and there I like um, I've been really into like <laughs> like Halloween metal obviously recently yeah. so yes. that that that's been pretty good um, like um, a lot of crowbar a lot of uh, some typo negative in there oh, there you so. go Danzig oh yeah okay I'm kind of it's all over the place nice. but I like it all right. Cool, like a variety of things, I like that. That's how I'm. Oh yeah. Um, if you had an uh, uh, had the opportunity to go back and do it all over again, would you change anything? If so, what would it be? Uh, I I would not change doing anything over again. Um, I got really lucky. The first gym that I picked was the winner, and I've been with them and my coaching staff since. The only thing that I would change is that I'd start it sooner. Yeah, <laughs> I'd do everything the same. I would just start, just start it earlier, five years yeah. earlier. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Outside of powerlifting, what are some of your hobbies and things you like to do? 
I like to do all of the things um, <laughs> this past week. So I, I like to roller skate a lot. I go to skate parks and skate around. And this past week, my friend who's a, a, another skater was in town and we hit all kinds of skate parks and like roller rink, like old school roller rink, which was really cool. Um, so when I'm not there, I'm usually skating around or just doing work, playing with the dogs. That's, that's what I do nice. outside. Okay. Very cool. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hopefully still lifting. That's the goal. Right. Like longevity within the sport. I still want to be a part of it. Um, I started coaching recently, so I definitely see myself continuing that. Um, 10 years, um, I'll definitely be involved in the sport, doing what I can for helping other people get better. Um, 10 years, I should hopefully be retired from the military. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I just, I just hit, I'm hitting 11 in May. So I'm over the hump there. (laughs) Um, so we'll, we'll like fingers crossed if, if nothing changes, everything's going good stick out the the rest of the 10 and and be all right. Um, And yeah, just, you know, having a good time, enjoying life and making the best of it 10 years. So. Very cool. When you first started out, what lifters did you look up to? Oh man, I fangirled over pretty much everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Because when I first started out, like that was the, like there were so many incredibly talented and like amazing role model female lifters to look up to. Susan Salazar was a big one for me. Um, Oh my gosh. Incredible woman. Um, Susan Salazar, Laura Phelps, like fangirling over Laura Phelps, then meeting Laura Phelps, then like working with her on things, then like going to her gym and training there and making friends with her crew. I was like, Oh my God. Sometimes every time, like I'll talk to her and be like, Hey, I'm friends with Laura Phelps. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that <is really> freaking <laughs> cool. <laughs> like you're still Laura Phelps. That's amazing. But like, how are you? Do you want to talk to me still? Okay, cool. Um, yeah. That's uh, cool. Laura, Amy, uh, Amy Weisberger, yep. um, Becca, of course, mm-hmm. Rita, like the list goes on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of really good ones. A lot of inspiring mm-hmm. females of that time for sure. Mm-hmm. What advice can you offer new lifters who are just starting out? Oh, um, be patient, just starting out, be so patient, be like obnoxiously patient. There's so many people who jump into it and like want to just hit fast forward and get that instant gratification and they will, they'll jump coach to coach. They'll spend way too much time in the wrong weight class, just spinning their wheels like find a coach and a program and just stick with it and let that person help you like give them time to help you. A lot of people don't allow their coaches time to help them right off the bat. And then they screw themselves in the end because they start making bad decisions and they they just lose time. They waste time doing that stuff. So freaking patience. So important. It's my big piece of advice. That's really good advice. Patience can be a tough one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have issues with it every day. <laughs> know, me, too. <laughs> me too. Not my strong suit. I'm working on it also. <laughs> we all right, are. Right, right. Totally. Um, would you like to give a shout out to anybody? Any of your sponsors or anything? Coaches. Coaches. Yeah. I love a good shout out. Um, so my home gym is the Dirty Gym. Um, my coach is Marcus Muchek out there. I've been with him since 2016. Um, I train currently at Jimmy's Gym with Jimmy Cold and the rest of the crew at Unleashed here in Virginia. So those guys are wonderful. Um, LiftingLarge.com has been my sponsor for the past year. So Mike and Teal are just incredible sponsors and like hook me up with lots of things. Um, they're really supportive, especially right now with the next thing that I wanted to shout out, which is the, the main event project, um, which is this whole project and organization that myself, Leah Reichman, Allison Hind, um, to, and Tara Duncan put together. And it's basically just an initiative to promote um, supportive environments for females on meet day. 
and also help push along certain um, systemic things that we want to make sure get like happen within powerlifting so that we can push, you know, the female participation to the next level and that support, like get it, get them highlighted. Um, like gone are the days when there's one female yeah. lifter at a meet. Right. There's whole flights, there's whole female only meets that are two days long now. So wow. Like it's time, it's time that we start even and out some stuff and we, we start getting these, these women, the recognition that they deserve. And we want to do that by raising money through this project so that we can throw into prize pools so that we can sponsor new female athletes who want to come through and like start powerlifting scholarships type of things. Uh, we got a lot of ideas. Um, so that's kind of the gist of the main event project that bouncing around a lot on the internet right now um <laughs> starting off with a decent amount of traction which is very cool yeah. Yeah, i saw it on facebook today yeah i saw it yesterday yeah, yeah. Back, that I is our next question too that was that yeah that was that yeah. was yeah. The, next, project, so. the next question the segue master. that was a very nice segue yeah <laughs> so who are the people <laughs> uh, behind it like um who, who she does that. oh she did mm -hmm. okay but she... yeah myself leah um allison and tara okay, okay. okay. Yeah, so we, we got a, a good spread of like, we have heavyweight lifters, Allison competes at 165 and 181, and then um, multiply and equipped. So okay. we kind of have a nice little like blend and we're all in different federations too. So we have kind of like outreach and ties and like different networks, which is really yeah. cool throughout where we're at because we're all in different areas. Okay. And it kind of just started out of nowhere. <laughs> Um, and, and got big fast. <laughs> yeah. Like how long would you say you've been working on it or like how long ago oh, did man. it start? It was, it was right after the WPO. So August is when we all sort of like found each other. Cause none of us had talked really on the regular, like together since like before that, which was really interesting. Cause we all like had these issues that we brought up and like I talked to, to Leah Reichman probably like most out of that group before. And she was like, Hey, we should bring in this other person. We should bring in Tara. And they're both really good at, at articulating these things. And they have a lot of really good ideas. I think we might be onto something with this. And it all started with just a four person group chat. That's cool. That's <laughs> and cool. And we've been, and I think we just, we just got our like paperwork and everything for being official, setting up bank accounts and like doing giveaways now and trying to get the infrastructure like down pat so that we can start raising money, um, to, to give out, to support like the meets that are supporting women and support the women themselves. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share about that? That was kind of our last question. Is there anything else? Oh, okay. We I strike that. We have a few more. <laughs> yeah, I've been taking but notes. Is, is there anything else about the main event project that you would like people to know? Um, I think I think I pretty much okay. got most of it. I'm sure afterwards, Alice and Leah and Tara will be like, "You forgot to say this." <laughs> <laughs> no, they they won't. Well, if they're I'll watching, they can totally chime in to the. Like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's they true. Can they can totally might be in there. Yep. I mean, anything they want to say or they add to are. that, um, <laughs> they can totally do that because we'll read. We'll come over here and just just yeah. a minute and read all that. So. I'm um, I'm pretty proud of. I don't I don't know if this was one of your questions, Ryan, that you were going to bring up, but I'm pretty proud of the work that we've done in the past 24 hours on driving change and initiating discussions on expanding the female weight classes because there are now a handful of federations that said that they're expanding them mm -hmm. um including the wrpf that just happened today and that's a big one that's where all the big like money meets yes, are on the raw side um so we're like over the moon with that like it's i don't think i've ever seen <laughs> the sport or like this type of rallying behind something like, granted there hasn't been like this big of a change since I've been in. Um, but it's just really cool to, to have people say, Hey, we recognize your project. We have an issue with this thing. We've brought it up before. Like, this is what you guys are supposed to do. Right. Can you help us? And we're like, we don't know. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we were like, okay, what do we got to do? We got to organize. Okay. Petition, reach out to meet directors, 
you got this federation, you got this federation. Um, let's get the data. We hired data scientists to work with us and to scour and crawl through open powerlifting and be like, here's the percent increase of what these weight classes would look like over the next 10, 15, 20 years if they continue at that exponential rate of growth, um, which is really freaking cool to be able to just, we got it packaged up. Well, it's almost ready to be packaged up and, and given out. But uh, like, I'm pretty proud that we rallied and, and got together to try and to change it for for something that should have been done a while that's ago. Great. And now it's it's like the time is right. So Absolutely. Yeah, it was really cool. It's a great time for it. No, that's incredible what you guys, the amount of support you guys have gotten just in the last 24 hours. It's insane. That's, yeah. It's amazing. My, I've never typed that much on my phone <laughs> in my life this past couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool. You you should be very proud. Congratulations on Thanks. being able to spark yeah. such a big, important change. Very cool. Yeah, and I'm happy to, to do the work if it means making it better for the, the folks that are my, my replacement, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's exciting. Very cool. And I have just a couple questions. questions. Yeah, sir. just a couple Before have been jotted down. Uh, how many meets uh, do you do per year? That's a good one. Oh, good one. Um, I don't think that there's an average number, but this past year I did, let me see, Kern, WPO, showdown and now i'm doing a bench only so four meets this wow, year okay. wow. typically i'm around i like to do at least one raw one equipped okay. but the the equipped ones that i want to go to are ones that require like qualifiers right. okay. so like wpo needed a qualifier so like that'll usually take the number up a little bit depending on what we want to do that year i think kind of my next question is when is your next meet um, so I'm scheduled to do the bench only one in November in Vegas with WRPF. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm like crossing my fingers right now because I'm not sure if my leave is going to get approved for okay. that one. Mm. Um, and if that doesn't get approved, I, I have the, the IPA one November 20th in New York bench only same thing. So the goal is the same there, but. I'm like I need a backup in case that doesn't get approved because I'm working towards it, so I want to do it. Right. Yeah. Well, it's good you were able to find another one that November twentieth. Yeah. I. Believe That's the same weekend so. Mendelssohn has his oh, meet, yeah. uh, IPA meet out there in California. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, this one's at York. Okay. Okay. And then my last yeah. question before we go to the chat box is, what kind of dogs do you have? Uh, I have two French Bulldogs. Okay, so Bigum is half French Bulldog, half Boston, and then Darwin's full French Bulldog. Oh, wow. Aww. And they are little pigs. Yeah. They're so funny. <laughs> I bet they're adorable. Okay. so uh, They're hilarious. Basically, we go over to the chat box, Amber, and we kind of read the chats, and there'll, there'll be a few questions in here, We and uh, there'll be some we skip okay. over, and... Uh, if need be, but start at the top. Katie Kolb says, says Yeah, Kate Kolb was in here right away. Hey. <laughs> yeah. My Wait girl. For it. Yeah. Um Just do the Glenn, Amber okay. one specifically. This Glenn, is Amber's show. Glenn I'm I'm Yoakum. not I'm not gonna answer any questions. So this is Amber. Can I ask it? <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> well, I know this one's this one is okay. for her. Glenn Yoklin, best advice for staying injury free since you compete raw. Mm. Not sure. Um, best advice. I mean, it sounds injury. like you haven't okay, had any so, injuries, so doing something right. I attribute a lot of that to like training equipped. Honestly, okay. like I switch back and forth if I'm going to prep for a raw meet. I know that there is an end time for that. That then I get to go get back in my gear, or I'll use my gear in a raw prep to supplement some of that training and like protect my hips. So I'll do box squats and briefs. I'll do sumo pulls and briefs. Like I'll still be doing my raw movements, but like I pepper in a lot of that protective equipment to keep me safe. Um, and also help with like progressive overload. Like I can handle way more weight in a box squat and I'm in a pair of briefs than I can raw. Right. So like, why wouldn't I want to use that for overload and also get the same like benefit out of like the posterior chain work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like, the, the rest of, like, the main important stuff be raw. But I use my equipment to protect me <laughs> and also the training style and, like, the way that we cycle through things to protect me. So that's my advice. Okay. Just, like, get with someone who knows, like, 
a coach who knows how to like train you through that basically. Okay. Cause I had a, a lean, mo- I leaned on mine quite a bit to, to help me stay injury free. What's that? I mean, I just can't get over that doing the things that you're doing and you've been able to avoid that. So that's, I mean, that's an impressive feat. It's knocking on. The I know yeah, I'm, I'm knocking, knocking on, on wood, wood for, for you every time I say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like... <laughs> I'm going to be in a bubble here and here probably. <laughs> And then I throw roller skates on for fun. Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I have no have idea you how this has ro- happened. Roller skating? Have you ever had any pad crashes? Uh, no. Or... I mean, I I broke my nose in derby, oh. um, I, but I think that was like the worst one. Wow. And like lots of fat lips, lots of like chip teeth type thing. Right. That's about it, though. Okay, that's pretty hardcore. Uh, <laughs> um, Cody Plum. I would like to ask Amber what it's like training with Jenny, Jimmy Cobe and how much she has learned about benching from his team. Um, this is Cody. Cody Plum. Cody Plum. Yep. That's awesome. I talked to Do you Cody, know Cody? On, on Instagram a couple times. Yeah. yeah um, cool I love guy. that he asked this question because I was hoping this would come up because um, anytime I get a chance to brag about Jimmy, I do. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> but like there was – my bench was stuck for a really long time before I came out here. Like, especially my equipped bench. Like I was happy that I was hitting in the mid threes. Now I hit the mid threes raw. Wow. (laughs) Um, But like, I was happy that I was hitting that before I came here. And then I came here and Jimmy just like blew my mind with all of his knowledge of bench shirts. And like, let me just like, just like allow and trusting him to like take me down the path of like, Hey, I want to teach you the katana. I want to teach you different ways to put it on. I want to teach you different overload methods, different accessories, uh, reverse grip bench pressing. Never did that before I met him. And it has like greatly increased my, like, I guess bench press quality of life because it allows me to train the triceps without hurting my shoulders. Right. Um, and it's it's just sick. Like training with Jimmy is awesome. And also another thing that I think has gone into like my bench success with training with him um, is the confidence. Like I'm not afraid to get under any bar. Like I know if it's loaded with something and Jimmy says that I can do it, then I know I'm going to at least be able to unrack it and hold right. it. <laughs> Um, and you know, I got him over me. I got the guys that I trust on the side. I know I'm going to get a good handoff. They're not going to let anything happen to me. And that peace of mind is so freaking important. Cause like you go in there and you don't know like how you're going to get handed something as heavy as that. Like, that's really scary. And then you start to second guess yourself. Um, and you start to second guess your capabilities, but if you can, can lay down there and be confident, like sky's the limit. Right your body's the limit actually <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah so that, that's what it's like training with jimmy and he freaking rules that whole crew is oh. awesome there i'm really fortunate to have him that's awesome very cool so jimmy cobe says is pointing up at cody's comment and says three of my favorite people here Yay. very cool uh, <laughs> very very cool kind of a cool question roger brome what is your Biggest gym pet peeve? That is a good question. Ooh, 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 <laughs> it's probably hard ooh, okay. to limit it to just one. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I think. Okay, here's here's one. Um, this is mine, and then I'm gonna tell you Jimmy's because I think it's really funny, and it's also a, a minor pet peeve of mine too. Now that I spent time with him. <laughs> um, so when people are recording their videos. And like they have it set up and then someone like walks in front of it or does something while they're getting ready to do it. And then that person who's lifting gets pissed. And I'm like, that is the grossest, cringest, like thing, pet peeve to me. I'm like, really? You're going to get mad at that person for a while? They're just going to stare at them and roll their eyes. And I'm like, this is a gym. People pay to go here. Like you're not that special that they, they just ruined your whatever 10 rep max video. Like just <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> So that's one of my pet peeves is seeing someone like get pissed off with the moon. They did you that ruin. Like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and then Jimmy's, this also is another video thing, but people using the boards as tripods. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, yeah. I'll never do that. Uh, we haven't seen that in our <laughs> like, I've but... never seen that. 
Yeah, they're like these are tools for benching, and people are like, "Well, what is this fancy little just two by four tripod? This is for my it's phone." Perfect, it like, works. I need that. <laughs> I need it to. But they're to be fair, they're really good tripods. Oh yeah, they're set up pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's but funny. yeah, and like when I say pet peeve, I'm never gonna be like go up to someone and be like, "Hey, that was really stupid. Like, why don't you stop doing that?" Like, it's just a little annoying thing that when I see, I'm like. I don't like that. <laughs> I roll. Yeah, I'm like, just, okay, I'm going to go move on and do my own yeah. thing. Uh, that was a good question. Kate Cobe, got to yeah. talk about that 685 bench to boards. <laughs> yeah, Kate. Yeah, that that was a scary one. That was the first time that I've been, like, a little puckered on a lift. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I, away, like, man, I, over your face. Yeah, I watched yeah, that lift. I knew, day. I knew, like he wouldn't have put it on there if he didn't think I could do it. Right. And um, the thing with those band shirts, though, is I'm noticing I don't have much experience in it, but from what, the amount of times I've been in it, is like boards kind of screw you on them because you don't get that full range of motion okay. to get that like stretch reflex. Is like. I'm thinking of like holding a rubber band on my arm and if I pull it back this much and let it go, it's going to hurt. But if I only pull it back this much, it's not going to hurt as bad. Right. So it's like a three board is actually way harder yeah. than taking it down a little Hold further, well, um, which is why I was even scared, more scared. Actually, actually <laughs> picking at me, but I'll, I, in my defense, in my day, I had what was called a board shirt back when I was lifting. In Ooh, the what's that? A, board, a board shirt is a shirt that you cannot touch in. But off a three board, it, it, it you can do twelve hundred in it. You know, it, you'll never touch in this shirt, but it's great just for board or overloading bo board work. That's what I used it for. So that sounds like one of my katanas. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna use that. A board. This is just my board, board shirt. Board. Yeah. I was thinking that you sewed boards into yeah. it when it, you said that. It's just super, super like, tight. That could work yeah, yeah, it'll never touch, but it works great off. Yeah, three, you three, just and hit four it board. Right at that yeah. place. And it never moves. Yeah, yeah. it hovers on three board, 1100. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long time That's ago. That's insane. Yeah. That's nuts. Oh my God. Roger Brome has a question. Kate Cobe says, J Jimmy, better say bench. That must have been when we asked you about your favorite your favorite power lift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I you knew, knew that what the watching. expected answer was, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the appropriate. Gotta do them proud. Right. Roger Brome. If you could change, add, or delete a powerlifting rule, what would it be? Ooh, oh, I love this one? question. That's a good one. I think I like two. Change, three. add, or delete. But I definitely wouldn't add anymore. Break that down. That's a question we'll, uh, a good we'll question. ask our guests. Yeah, yeah that's, that's an incredible yeah. question. That, thank you, Roger. Thank that's you, Roger. A good question. Hell yeah, Roger. <laughs> um, I think I would. I think I'd just eliminate the start command and all bench presses, all federations. Okay, wait, hang on. <laughs> I said that, and now I have another one. I, I would like all federations to have monoliths and use monoliths. Oh, there you go. Because, <laughs> um, like, freaking safety, man. Like, e even if you want to walk it out and be like, no, we walk out the squats, that's fine. Walk it out of a monolith. Yeah. Right, exactly. <sighs> it's just just safer. Yeah, so I picked two. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's a good question. You can pick as many as you want. I'm like, I'm gonna okay, say. I guess he didn't limit He me. didn't limit you, so you <laughs> tell us how, however many you want. Cody Plum, also, how much does it hype you on the bench to have the Kate Cobe yelling for you? That is honestly one of my favorite parts about benching. <laughs> when she's there on Saturday mornings, like, I live for the Kate Cole scream <laughs> after like the woo. Like, it's better than Ric Flair, man. It's, <laughs> it's something else. I want to like bottle it up or record it and like make it my ringtone or something. There you go. That's a good idea. <laughs> I would just hear it and be like, oh, it's bench. time to do something crazy on the bench. <laughs> That's cool. I love it. Oh, I love it. It's awesome. That's really cool. I got a question real fast. Okay. I, I think I saw one of your videos. Jimmy had you, you had a sled behind you. You were laying on the ground and you had a rope. Was that a lap pullover mm -hmm. or is that a tricep thing? Triceps. Tricep. Oh, I've got, I'm going to be doing that tomorrow mm -hmm. in the gym. I saw that. I want to ask about <laughs> oh, it. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. It was 
brutal. Yeah, no, like I, I forgot about that one. I tried to forget about it because it was so rough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was just like grabbing yep. and then a tricep extension down on them both until you're, you can't do how it many anymore, repetitions, basically. how many sets. I mean, just, uh, I think we did like four rounds okay. and I don't know how long our turf is. That's the only variable okay. I'm not sure of, but I can send you a message. Cause I, I can ask Joe, the owner, how long the turf is, but we basically just had a partner stand on the sled down there. And we pulled it until they were at our heads. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that looked like fun. It looked something cool. different. I'm always looking for new tricep exercises yeah. with my guys. And I, I thought that one looked cool. It was really fun. It was very fun. The cool one. Jimmy Cobb. Uh-huh. Jimmy Cobb. Where's Kyle? <laughs> Kyle's in the basement babysitting the dogs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just went and picked my boyfriend Kyle up from the airport before this. And I'm like, hey, sorry, I got to go do this live thing. <laughs> Can you go downstairs? And I think he's actually in the chat right now, which is very funny. I think I saw his name pop up with a question. Kyle so Kelly. I'm like, are you, are you asking questions from the basement? Oh, yeah. Is it Kyle Kelly? Yeah, okay. That's him. <laughs> yep. That's he's him. he's on here. He'll be coming up in just a second. <laughs> That's so funny. That's yeah, funny. he's in the basement. That's cool. <laughs> Roger Brome, do you have any sport related superstitions? Ooh. That's kind of a cool one too. Um, I don't like stepping over bars. Um, that one's kind of like a Slavic one or like a from the, the Soviets one, like stemming from Olympic weightlifting. And I don't, I mean, there's no reason for it, obviously. I just I won't step over someone else's bar or my own bar. I'll go around it. <clears throat> And That's a good one. <laughs> it's not a reason. I, I just don't like it. <laughs> um, my coach didn't like it, and like a lot, and you're a product of your environment. So it's like, yeah, we don't do that. Okay, we don't do that. So yeah. I don't. That's a good one. That's a good superstition. Yeah. Um, and then Kyle Kelly, what are you most proud of accomplishing accomplishing in the sport? <laughs> That's honestly, that's an easy one because it's pretty fresh right now. And that's getting these weight classes expanded for the women. Yes. Like if I never get an all time world record, if I never like do any of those goals for whatever reason, like I am like, I'm happy with, with going down with that one. Like that, that that's a hill I'm happy to die on. And that was really cool. Like it, it's far from over because once, and unless we get everyone on the, the same page, like, I don't consider it a win, but we have a lot of the big players that are like, yep, 2022, we're doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of being able to, like, set the future female lifters up for success and, like, give them those classes to grow into. And I'm freaking stoked to see what some of those competitions look like. Yeah. Like, it's stacked 220 class. Like, <laughs> It's, it's going to be nasty. Yeah. 242s, 275s equipped. Like, oh, my God. Like. It has the potential to be real gnarly. So I'm very, very proud of that. Very cool. Yeah, that's definitely something you should be very proud of. That's amazing. Thanks for the question, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Cody Plum was so awesome watching Amber kick ass at the WPO. What was that whole experience like? This one's Cody. Uh, the WPO is fun. Um, I just love equipped meets in general. Um, going and doing equipped meets make my raw meets seem so, I don't want to say easy because they're so difficult on the platform, but they're just so much more chill. Like, I just have to wear a pair of knee sleeves. <laughs> this is whatever. Um, like, cool, I get to chill, basically. Um, the WPO was actually really, really cool on Women's Day because it was so tight with competition between like the, amongst like the top five. So, like, towards the end, myself, Rebecca Roberts, and I think Anna McCloskey were all kind of edging, trying to edge each other out for, for that third spot. And uh, it was really exciting to kind of see that unfold in real time and live, like changing attempts last minute, like, Oh God, if I do this, then I can, I can maybe get, get these extra points or like, what did she actually weigh in at type of thing? Um, so that was really cool. Something that you don't really see a whole lot of at like local level mm-hmm. meets, but like when there's cash on the line, you're, you're making those calls and you have people in your corner that are trying to figure that out. Um, Anna McCloskey's last deadlift at the WPO, 
Um, I don't know if you guys saw that one, but that was, I should have mentioned that one in my question about like amazing lifts I've seen in person, but she had injured herself. I, I don't know if it was squat or bench, um, injured herself previous to that. And then she went out to go sumo pull, couldn't get her opener, tried sumo, couldn't get her second one, threw up a freaking Hail Mary, loosened her suit, I think, and then went up conventional and got it. <laughs> in her last one. Absolute freaking grinder. And I was just like sitting back there like bawling because it was so freaking yeah. like so much freaking heart Hard. in that. Yeah. And like, just, just little things like that. And like watching these women get PRs and then in the, in the warm up room, like helping each other, like, Oh yeah, I got you. Like, Hey, you need some chalk. Like, yeah, here. Oh shit. I don't have any baby powder. Like, yeah, here you go. And like, just because, you know, like we, we want to be each other on the platform doesn't mean we're not bros back there, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I love about the sport so much. So WPO has a special place in my heart. Fierce competition out there. Fun meet. Yeah, good sportsmanship. That was kind of a question I want to ask. Got these bigger shows. What's it like in the warm-up room? Is there one bad apple back there? In my day, there was. Not mention any names. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he knows who he is. Who could it be? <laughs> that's cool. Everybody's helpful, yeah. man. Yeah, that's nice. That makes mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. It's freaking amazing. It makes you like excited and want to do me. Like you get to go lift weights with your friends. Yeah. Like it's so cool. And I can only speak really because most of the meets that I do are two parters or two days and we're not in the warm up room with the guys. Um, but on the women's side, it's all just really cool. Like lots of like reunions, cool. like, Hey, how you doing? And like, we keep up with each other. Like I know what these women are lifting in the gym and prep. They know what I'm doing. So it's cool to like go watch your friends win yeah. Yeah. and you can be like, God, I know she's been freaking working her ass off for that lift. And she just went out and got it like Tamara Walcott. She's been working her ass off for that deadlift and that total. And she went out there and like took what was hers and it was really cool to watch it in person. So like, yeah, of course I want to, I want to be the best and I want to like, like win these competitions and beat people and all that. But like, I also really think it's cool to watch my friends win. So it's like a, I, there's not it's not possible for me to lose unless i bomb out <laughs> which i have <laughs> yeah okay where were we at right here kate cobe. kate cobe definitely talk about the main event project because you are changing the world <laughs> yeah i love love what's happening there yeah, that's really exciting incredible. you guys have really just lit on fire i mean i can't believe how much in just 24 hours. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, it, it went hard. I was like, do we even need a petition? Like, is that a thing? Do those even work? <laughs> and I'm like, I guess they do. Like, this is the first time I've really, because obviously petitions only increase awareness and just like basically show that there's appetite for this change to be made. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually you, you see a lot of them flop or you see a lot of them just like hit a stalemate. And nothing ever happens with them. Um, like we, we crossed over into a thousand signatures before the day was half over wow. after I put that in. Yeah. We're almost at 3000 today. Oh, damn. That's crazy. That's yeah. Amazing. And I'm like, there's that many people even in power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's but so yeah. Nice. And I'm like, it's just, it's just really cool. And I'm, I'm happy to see people rally together and I'm happy to like help change it for the better and like do my part and work with these incredible women like Kirsten, Tara, Leah and Heidi or Heidi. Heidi's another one too. Heidi Danelle of a uh, future is female pod podcast. Um, she's helped us a lot with the data and everything. Right. So it's been like, yeah, main event project was like the driving force, but it's been like input from everyone and people reaching out and being like, Hey, here's my number. What can I do? Um, I'm a state chair for such and such federation. Who can I talk to? Like, send me the talking points and we'll like reach out or like Katie reaching or Kate reaching out to, you know, the folks that her and Jimmy are close with within different federations to try and be like, Hey, what do you guys think about this? It's been really cool. Yes. Incredible. Um, Tim Odell. Tim Odell, what is your favorite powerlifting memory? Tim, um, favorite powerlifting memory. I think it was my first, oh, what do I want to say? 
I think it was the first time I hit, I hit a 400 pound bench. There you go. Um, and that, um, if I, I'm just thinking about the memory and like how, how that one stuck with me. And it was, I did a, an APF meet up in Lombard in Chicago. I went up there with Kyle, um, my training partner, Alfredo, and like all of us were sick. <laughs> we didn't feel well, <laughs> um, like bubble guts, whatever. And, uh, like, and my bench had not been going well at all that entire prep. And I was like, I just really want to freaking bench 400. I've been at like 360 my entire life, 360, 330, 315. I could not make it past 400. And for whatever reason that day, I decided that it was time to learn how to use that shirt. And I did. (laughs) And I hit 400 and was like, I don't know what just happened, but I need to remember what it was. Um, (laughs) And it was it was it was very fun and exciting. And like that meet was really fun because we you have like the hype crew like Bane and all the, the WPO spotters there. Um, so yeah, that one was really memorable, the 400 pound oh. bench. And then, then I moved and or I didn't move, but then I found Jimmy and I was like, oh, 400 pound bench, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'll never forget that one. That one was, was amazing. That was really cool. Nathan Brandhorst, how do you balance your training between geared and raw? I can't think of anything more badass than competing at the Open, WPO, and Showdown. Amazing. Oh, that's really sweet of you to say. Um, I appreciate you saying that, too, because that was one of the things my coach and I talked about. And we're like, how freaking badass would it be to compete at, like, the three largest different categories of competition in one year? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Let's do it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, is so uh, it was not easy. I'll tell you that. Um, it was pretty freaking hard um, because we had to basically go back and forth. So the the tough, like prepping for the Kern was normal because I just prepped as if it was a regular raw meat. I didn't have anything after that. I didn't have anything before that. So I just started a block of training that was basically like, hey, here's your raw prep for a meat. You're using wraps. This is how we're going to do it. Um And then after that, I started prep for the WPO a little ways out from August. Um, However, the showdown was the same time, except in September. (laughs) So literally a month apart. And that one got really tricky. Um, So basically what we did is we got super creative and peaked for the WPO in equipment. We did everything prioritizing the equipment because I needed, I'm, I'm still proficient, like, because I'm in equipment doesn't mean I forget how to raw squat. <laughs> like it just doesn't. Um, and people I think overlook that a lot and they're like, Oh, I'm just going to forget how to do everything. Like, no, most of your training in as your, as an equipped lifter is raw anyway. Um, so um, trained and peaked for that entire WPO session in equipment and then basically did the WPO came back, took like a few days off and then just like, tried to ride that like CNS peak and that like WPO peak and stretch it out as far as I could. Cause I wasn't going to get anywhere on my raw numbers in three weeks. Like they were, they were going to be what they were no matter what. Um, so basically we just hit things in like higher percentages, doubles and singles and like 80 to 95%. Um, and just kind of tried to like extend that peak in terms of, like the CNS side of things and then use that the peak from the WPO to continue riding into the raw peak. And it was, it was, I wouldn't say it was a double peak. It was literally just like, please hang on just a little bit longer. We're almost done. Um, like, Hey God, it's me, your girl again. If you could just make it so that um, I can do this me a month afterwards, that'd be great. Um, but that's, that's how we, we went into that. So it was a little Jesus take the wheel, a little science, uh, and it worked out okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I would say it did. You did amazing. That's just Thank you. absolutely incredible. Uh, Cody Plum, do you think benching equipped has helped your raw bench get stronger? Would you recommend other ladies do both? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I definitely think. Um, just like with any principle of overload, 
with any movement. Like that is how you can look at equipped benching. So equipped benching will make your raw bench stronger because it will just make your bench stronger. It will make your like fortify your bone density because your, you know, tension in your muscles and your bones, it'll help with um, getting your central nervous system used to handling heavier weights. Um, it'll make you less afraid to have those weights in your hands, even if it's raw, cause you, it won't be startling. Um, also like benching in a shirt has taught me tons of form discipline in my raw bench because my raw bench was always kind of all over the place. I just kind of like muscled it up and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. In a shirt, you cannot <laughs> just get in it and do it. There's no way, like, unless you're, I don't know, very gifted. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> So taking all of those like little tips and tricks and cues to get the most out of your shirt and then, you know, rolling them over to your raw bench. That's been so beneficial for me. Um, I don't think if someone wanted to use equipment for overload, I don't think I'd give them a bench for shirt first. I'd give them a pair of briefs first because um, it it's hard to learn. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to someone who was going to try and do it by themselves. <laughs> Okay. Because that's scary. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Tim O'Dell, what accessories do you like doing for deadlift? Oh, none of them. I hate <laughs> deadlift, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, I'm a big, big stiff leg deadlifter. I love stiff leg deads. I love um, snatch grip deadlifts. I love demos. Good mornings, pretty much anything that fires up that posterior chain and the hamstrings and challenges the lockout. Um, those are some of my favorite accessories for the deadlift. Um, I like barbell work for supplementals for the deadlift um, and then dumbbells on the bodybuilding side or machines to just beef up the hamstrings, the glutes, the upper back, the lower back, that type of stuff. Okay. Perfect. One rep max. One rep max. I'm sorry, it's loud here at work, LOL, but did she talk yet about the wonders of our Lord and Savior, Savior, re Savior <laughs> reverse grip bench press, LOL? <laughs> <laughs> you did mention it, didn't you? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, we love the reverse grip bench. We love benching backwards, our Lord and Savior, <laughs> the, the Lord and Savior of saving our shoulders, basically, reverse grip bench press. We love it. Do you guys it. <laughs> do a lot of full range reverse grip or board work or both? Oh, yeah, both. Okay. We do both. Um, I like full range rep work um, in certain percentages. It, basically, if I just need to hit certain percentages and like log that volume for the day, sometimes I'll switch it around and do um, do a reverse grip because my shoulders are feeling a little funky okay. and I need that full range of rep um, and I'll switch it around. And then uh, tricep murder is a thing we do. Where we just do reps down and up the boards and we like to do that okay. um, reverse grip too. Oh, sometimes. really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think we call that triceps yeah. of death at our yeah. gym. Yeah. I was thinking that sounded like what you guys call triceps of death. <laughs> it's, it's all something something similar. Right. It's all something that's really bad yeah. and really it's scary. It's got a bad name. It's not going to be fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's brutal. Uh, let's see. Aaron. Aaron Norris, do you ever have days? Oh, Aaron. <laughs> do you ever have days where you have self doubt under the bar, and if so, how do you uh, overcome it? Also, hi. <laughs> Aw, Aaron. Aaron's one of my lifters that I coach, and she is getting ready to do her very first multiply meet. Right she's a raw lifter. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited for her, and she's also crazy. I'm sorry. Side note. She uh, built an entire home gym for herself and has, she's a remote athlete, trained by herself, equipped lifter. Oh, wow. wow. So she learned it by herself. She's come up a handful of times to like get in a bench shirt and like get in a squat suit with me. But like for the most part, it's just been through videos and just through like constant communication. She's learned how to lift and equipment oh, wow. solo. <laughs> Yeah. Insane. <laughs> like mad props to her. <laughs> um, but to answer her question, like the self-doubt is always creeping in there and it sucks. Um, 
everyone deals with it. Like, I don't care how confident someone seems or they, they come off as, um, there's a lot of like imposter syndrome stuff that I deal with of like, why the hell would anyone want to listen to me? I've only been doing this this long. Um, doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, and then getting under the bar with self doubt. Um, like there's a lot of times where I'm just like, okay, my coach would not give this to me to do if they didn't think I could right. do it. And that's usually what wipes it out for me. Like the other day he had programmed, uh, I think sets of three at 45 in the deadlift sumo. And I'm like, I've never done that in my life. There's no way I can do that. That's too heavy. But my, my shit hurts already. Like I can't, I'm not going to be able to do that. And then I was just like, no, I at least need to try it. He wouldn't have given it to me if I couldn't do it. And like the first set was fine. And I was like, what are you doing? Like you just psyched yourself out. Like, so just like trusting in the people who you have, basically like asked to help you trusting in them, trusting that they know what they're doing. And like that, that usually helps with wiping that out. Okay. That's a really yeah. good question. Cause I know that's something that everybody deals with. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. That was a great question, Aaron. Cody Plum. Cody Plum in your SDP, how much can, how much can say like five to 10 pounds of body weight change the way it works? I'm hoping mine will be forgiving since it's stretchy material, but I recently put on 10 pounds really fast. Ooh, and the SDP specifically. Um, mine's really forgiving. Um, like, I, I've trained in it as a one, 198, like, chilling in 198, and I've also trained in it as, uh, all the way up to, like, 215, 212. Um, it felt way better at 215, 212. Um, cause it, it was tighter and, and worked a lot better, had a little more pop, but I mean, it was, it was still functioning. So I would say that there's a lot more give in those SDPs than there are in the katanas and 10 pounds, depending on if it is like a le like legit 10 pounds versus like bloat 10 pounds. Like those two things are right. totally different mm -hmm. too. So kind of gotta, I guess, take your chances depending on what it is, but I think you'd be fine at 10 pounds. Honestly, it also depends on how tight it is currently. Right, how it started. So, okay. good luck. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I think Cody's competing at the meet we're going to. I think so. Mendelsohn's November 20th. Yeah. Think, oh, really? Yeah. His next one. Yep. Yep. Nice. So, you get to be there Let's and watch Let's go, Cody. It. Yeah. Um, Kate Cobe says up to 2,788 signatures now. <laughs> Yes, that's crazy petition. That's freaking awesome! Holy that's crap! Insane. Shoot. Here's a cool one. I never thought about that. Cody Plum. Exactly. All right, Cody Plum. I really hope that Tiny can add the ladies to the baddest bencher meet. Would be awesome to see you win that one. Something else we can rally for the ladies. Oh, there you go. Ooh, <laughs> I also hope that I saw Tiny's post. Um, that said they, they're they hoping to add the ladies. I thought I read that, and yeah. I was like, Tiny, what are we hoping for? Let's, Let's do it, it my happen. guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I would, I'd be there in a heartbeat if there was a women's baddest venture. Like, I, totally I saw those jackets you guys got. Those are badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do, yeah. I don't know what ours would say, though. What, 600-pound bench, 500-pound venture? I don't yeah. know. There's no 1,000-pound club. Yeah, 500 is pretty <laughs> sick for a, for a female. Yeah. So I think we could go with five yeah. or 600, yeah. No, that'd be... Yeah, I think that would be really freaking cool. Yes. Um, I would love to participate in that. And, like, that is right up main event projects alley for totally. something to try and, like, raise awareness for and try and get support for. And, like, if that existed, of course, we would we would probably we would try and raise money so that we can help with the prize money for the female baddest venture. Oh, there you go. I was like, literally why we exist. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we should be able to make that happen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Tell me when. If, it, if it happens, I'll go. There you go, Tiny. If I, my boss approves my leave. <laughs> <laughs> is it kind of hard to get approved for time off? Uh, right now, yeah. it is. Um, I just switched jobs, so, like, I'm working for a new person. So, and I'm also trying to, like, learn the ropes, and taking time off is, like... 
I don't like to do it because I don't want to be the new guy that's like, oh, hi, I'm here. Um, also, bye. Yeah, I'm taking right. some time off. And they're like, she doesn't even know how to do her job yet. Why is she taking leave? <laughs> um, so I'm trying to avoid that right now. Right. Um, but once I get the hang of it, it'll be a lot easier to take some time off. Yeah, totally. That makes sense. Kate, Kate Cobe, can't wait to watch Aaron crush this meat. Yeah. yeah. I can't either. I'm excited. She's going to get a multiply t- total on the board and we're going to like work towards getting her to the pro-am. Like she's all in for equipped lifting. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited. It was also a really accomplished raw lifter too very cool. before she jumped into gear. So maybe she'll be the next, the next hybrid, yeah. the next raw equipped female. What we want more of us. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause that's, it's so impressive. Like to be able to be that good at both is just insane i just i just like being able to speak the language on both sides and like talk to my equipped friends and tell them like the ones who are like oh raw lifting is so bleh i'm like okay well see here's the cool things about it and then my equip my my raw friends who are like a quick lifter is like, yeah. we, don't, we don't understand <laughs> it so i can be like actually this is really cool and equipment can actually really help you get better That's at true. raw lifting so i'm like feel like the freaking avon lady of equipped lifting like have you tried these have you tried this (laughs) like (laughs) it's all still lifting weights and people are doing it and having fun so like just if you don't like it just respect each other that's all i ask and i'm trying to like kind of bridge the gap a little bit yeah very cool okay kim odell i definitely agree with you cody the women of powerlifting are amazing as hell and make the sport great. Very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Damn. I like Tim. And that yeah. happened to be our last question here. Oh, Unless anybody oh, else. Another one came through. I definitely agree. Single ply shirts really helped with my raw bench. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. Hell yeah. I wasn't just making it up. <laughs> oh, here's another one here. Cody Plum. Cody Plum. What do you what do you all think the weight qualification should be for the baddest bencher women? 400, 500? I'd like to see Rosanna in that mix eventually also. Yeah, what do you think? Is that something that Tiny, Tiny would uh, dictate since he's putting on well, the and so, a specific yeah. number? Um, yeah, I don't know. I talk a lot with Tiny, so I can... Um, get some information on that to see he must not be on because i no, think he would chime in he would totally in. so he might i think he works out on this night yeah. so he might not be mm-hmm. quite done yet and it's a good question if we're talking 400 i mean there's some some raw gals in that range yeah. too right that's very true <laughs> that's cr- insane it's amazing <laughs> it yeah. is very amazing when's the next meet that we'll see you in the band shirt and doing some benching is that November 20th, oh. it will either be in Vegas okay. or in York. And you'll be in the two ply uh, Pharrell? Depending on that leave. Yes, oh, wow. the two ply Pharrell okay. is the one that's that we're going with. I don't want to give away any numbers, but uh, is there an opener? Is there, we'll just leave, we'll leave that out, out of the picture. I'm just curious because <laughs> you yeah. look so awesome in that shirt. I want the full range 610, and Jimmy's laughing. We posted that I... a few weeks ago. And uh, I, I love that. And 685 <laughs> off three boards and just throwing it up. I mean, I mean, man, you've got that shirt down. Like, and it's going to be crazy to see what uh, what's going to fly up. So, yeah, I think the biggest thing right now is just protecting my hands. That's been the hardest part of this. Like the full range, great. Like flies right up, awesome. Get the use out of that elastic is awesome. But when it comes up, it comes up so fast. Yes, it does, and you catch it a little bit in your hands and like my mitts they be hurting because of it (laughs) (laughs) so i'm just like okay please we got like calcium supplements we got like shoot it's right here like the firm grip stuff from like occupational therapists it's like grip putty that you just kind of squeeze around product placement yeah nothing wrong too. That. i don't know right it just happens <laughs> hey if it helped me then maybe it'll help someone yeah, else so that's a cool, great idea so yeah we'll we'll see we have some numbers in mind okay. we kind of have like a rough draft game okay. plan um but we're gonna send it it's gonna be fun right on. 
We're going to send it straight out the gate. There so. you go. Yeah, it's very cool. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kate Cobe, I think it should be top eight to ten heaviest benches. Oh, that's a good idea. I would take the hot top heaviest uh, benches. I think that, I assume she's talking for the heaviest. The yeah. Yeah. The baddest baddest bencher. benchers for the women. That makes sense. That's... Yeah, just pop it pop it on down through open powerlifting and invite the names. Yeah, that go. makes a lot of sense. And that's yeah, in April that's next idea. year, I believe, right? Not March? Tiny's meet? Oh, did he switch? He, well... I, he sent it to me. I, I looked it over, so. When was it? Was it in March? It was March 24th. Year? Yeah, it was okay. the day after my so birthday you, last so year, so. So yeah. he moved it. Oh crap! If it's in April, is it? In I thought I thought that's what I read. Don't quote me, but I could have swore it was April. All right, because yeah. last year that's it was... when the pro am is. Uh oh. Because if you have a women's baddest venture, most of the women are going to be doing Ooh. the pro am yeah. in April. Yeah. That is. Yeah, don't. It's on Facebook. I just has I... he already like posted the flyer to where it's official? Yeah, yeah. I saw a flyer. He... Yeah, and I thought okay. it was April. I looked at it briefly. So. Well, hopefully, okay. hopefully yeah. you're wrong. Because that would make it hard to get a good yeah. turnout for women. That would be... Yeah, it'd be really tough to get the women out yeah, there. Says, oh, on. May 14th. I'm sorry. For the baddest venture? Oh, okay. Baddest venture? Oh, I could probably work. Well, would, Where did I get April? I'm getting that old. would be more I'm doable, depending on when. And... I, I don't even know what day it is of the week. So, <laughs> my guess it's, <laughs> it's hard to keep track of. And I missed mm-hmm. I missed one um, from T. Pressifer. He says, beautiful and strong. So oh, thanks, T. Yeah. Nice comment there. I think that was one of our last ones, yeah. um, unless another one sneaks through here. Um, I'm gonna. I wanted to ask. I skipped it on here, but what are some of your favorite um, assistance exercises for? I know we talked about deadlift, but what are some of your favorite for like squat and for bench? What are some of your um, for squats? I I'm like. Good mornings king for squat for me. Like that has been the one thing that if my good mornings are going up, I know my squat is also going up. So that's a really good indicator um, for an assistance movement. And it's a way that I can build my squat without doing more squats, right. <laughs> um, which is really, really helpful. And like variations of the good morning, like feet together, wide good morning, seated good morning, bands from the front good morning, chains good morning, like. Um, another one of my really awesome, like favorite ones is the, um, like segmented squat or Kang squat or good morning squat. So when you just good morning and then you drop down into your squat and that's a rep okay. and that one's freaking sick. There you go, Ashley. Yeah. I have to yep. try that one. Cause I love the good morning, mm-hmm. but I haven't really tried that variation. So I'll have to Ooh, yeah. You'll love it. One. If you like good mornings, you'll like that a lot. It's really challenging for positioning oh, to try and like find the hole from that like super strict hip hinge. Oh, so it's really fun. Okay. Hey, what about next, the bench? My next assistance exercise. Ooh, the bench. I love me some photo presses. Mm-hmm. Oh. Love me some photo presses and JM presses. Well, uh, photo presses um, as an assistant movement or maid movement or it's an assistant movement, right? So movement. what would the repetitions look like on yeah. a photo press? And sets. Uh, they would probably be relatively heavy sets of six, or sorry, sets of four, six reps apiece. Okay. Or we would switch them around. We'd do sets of four, four, or so yeah, sets of four for six okay. sets. Um, and then if we're looking for like more hypertrophy, actually, no, I don't think we'd ever do like the higher bodybuilding type of reps in photos. Right. They would always be a little heavier. Um, but in JMs, like we'll go, we'll go hard in JMs for like sets of 15 to 20 and just burn them out. Okay. Okay. And reverse grip or reverse grip benching. You can't forget to mention that. Yeah, we don't, <laughs> that one, we huh? don't do that too often. Once in a while. When I saw Jimmy, he sent me the 405 for 20 reps. Yeah. That was crazy, <laughs> That's man. Insane. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that was impressive. Uh, seeing that stuff in person like i always think like oh yeah it's just normal like i'm gonna be used to it here i'm never get i never get used to that no. ever just still always i never impressed. get used to just watching it or like three man handing off a thousand pounds for him to do it for rest yeah. i'm like what what is happening where am i <laughs> you're in the you're in a great place with you're great in a very special place so, great team members man it's Lucky so you. cool it's very yeah. cool i know i got i hit the freaking lottery i could not be more grateful I totally did that's really cool that you were able to well, shoot them. come out and visit us guys well that's kind of a far flight but one of these days yeah virginia not yeah. it's a matter of getting on a plane and yeah. making the trip out the, that true. way 
Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so a blast. Fun. Yeah. What part of Virginia cool. are you guys in out there? So we're in northern Virginia, okay. uh, Man- Manassas. Manassas. Um, and then I live in Alexandria. Okay. So, like, that's right outside of DC. Okay. So, Manassas is like for, for the little further inward, about 45, away, 45 minutes okay. away from me. Okay. Yeah, because we're actually getting off our asses and going to Mendelssohn's yeah, Beach in California. Mendelsohn. So. Yeah, we're yeah. broadening our horizons yeah. and getting out now instead of hiding in our little state of Washington out here. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Well, now it's op- opening up a little bit more, too, So, okay. and, That's... which is which is good for flying and traveling. Yeah. Right, definitely. Well, is that the end One of that? One more came through. Cody Plum, thanks for all the great answers. Have a great night. See you on Patreon, LOL. Ryan, I'm going to be ready to rock for Scott's meet. Good. I'll be doing all the handing off Aww. for everybody, so that's my job. <laughs> yeah. Hand off boy. Right. Well, Amber, it was that's great awesome. having you as so a guest. So nice having you. Yeah. And thank you for taking thank time. Thank you guys. Yeah, Incredible. this has been real enjoyable. Yeah, I learned a lot, and I, I definitely wanted to pick your brain a little bit because I know you train with Kolb, so I got a few answers, and uh, I got a new yeah. tricep exercise to do tomorrow with yeah. the rope and the More sled. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We got some new assistance yeah, exercises. Yeah. Send a video. Okay. okay. I filmed tomorrow's post, workout post for next that. week's show, so and I. I, incorporate, I show my speed bench workout, max effort workout. So yeah. you'll see that exercise awesome. on the road. We have a little, we have a little um, artificial turf track. I don't know how long it is. What? That's pretty 20 short. Yards? Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah, we'll short, make do. But you can, I mean, you would probably want to do like passes. You go back and yeah. forth. Yeah. 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 I bet you if you did a pass down and back, that'd be a pretty good uh, it, it look, it I don't look, know It's something how different. I, I, I have a tricep exercise list of like 40 different ones, and I have nicknames for them. Like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, 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 uh different story but uh these are going to be called kolb or amber something or others and what, <laughs> these were these were jimmy's concoction jimmy's concoction so i i just i just participated so i don't think i could be on okay the they're, gonna, they're gonna be called kolb something or others tomorrow when i make up make up on the nickname <laughs> on the spot so that's awesome yeah. speaking of, sorry tricep um if you're looking for new tricep accessories have you done and watched the video of jm blakely's like six rep tricep push down N- no. Is that on Instagram? Where, where can I find that? Can you send me a it's link? It's on YouTube. YouTube. I'll send you a link, and it's the nastiest tricep pushdown workout I've ever done in my push life. Pushdowns? Like, like cable pushdowns? Isometric. Really? Cable pushdown. Okay. Isometric, tons of time under tension, really lightweight. Oh, Lord. Just super, super gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, I got to have it. Though. Yeah, don't leave me hanging, boss. I know. Yeah. I'll, I'll get to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to write it down right now. Thank so you. Don't forget. JM Tricep. Is this something that he, that's been out on the internet? Because I, I I scan the internet for stuff, and I play on social media a little bit. Um, I just I didn't. Know. I think I don't know how old okay. it is. I think I found it about last year and started programming okay. it for my guys. But it's more like dug in. It's in like the powerlifting world okay. on the elite, or not powerlifting. I'm sorry, bodybuilding type of esque world under elite FTS. Okay. So that might be how you missed okay. it because it's it is. Like, I am very yeah, interested and excited. But we need it. I learned uh, yeah, they got two tricep exercises that are new, and yeah, my guys are gonna, they're probably <laughs> listening now, so they know they're gonna get tortured tomorrow. So, tomorrow's our speed bench day. So, yeah, we do a lot of volume Ooh, for triceps. Fun. So, yeah, excited. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. You'll have to let me know how. Oh, okay. It. We'll have videos. Definitely. Yeah. Because I, I think it rules. It sucks so bad in like a really good way. <laughs> I, I love to torture yeah, my guys. I'm like a bad drill sergeant. I really am. <laughs> one of my one of my things I say is uh I, and they already know this now so it's no big deal but I go like what what do you guys want to do for tricep work let me rephrase that what do you not want to do oh I don't want to do rolling dumbbells we're doing rolling dumbbells mm-hmm. that's how I do things oh, gives me chills yeah. I just got chills yeah, yeah. of course I make them yeah, stronger I mean, of man. course that's, this, that's the stuff that you're you're not good at and you don't like is the stuff, stuff that'll make do. you better yeah so. yeah yeah it's, somebody Zach Robinson is saying that Elite FTS has it on their page. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> on the Elite FTS page? Okay. Yep. So. Yeah, I'll send you a link. I have it in one of the, the Google Docs I send for my programs. Right. So I know at least where to find it. I appreciate that. Thank search you. search again. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, uh, pro- Any tricep destruction I can help with is I'm very happy. Happy to, to be so. a part of that, huh? <laughs> 
and uh, congratulations to the uh, main event project. Yes, and very hope, thank hope you. Hope that really grows, and it sounds like it's growing overnight. And and uh, yeah, it's that's an exciting. Amazing job with that. Like that's just really it's something. So I mean, the amount that you guys have been able to do in just a short period of time, yeah. I can't imagine. Like, sky's the limit. I mean, you guys are making mm-hmm. amazing changes. I so. liked it on Facebook yesterday or today. I saw a push like so. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Amber, that was uh, that's kind of the end of the show. We appreciate your time. Cool. Is there anything else that you'd like Thank to you. share? Well, I mean, you we've already asked you I a bazillion so. questions. So we might... I'm sure, I'm sure I, I just want to like thank you guys for having me on like i've done like podcasts and stuff but this is by far like one of the coolest setups the that. Thank you. and the questions and like you guys are so organized and like have well... really good like back and forth and stuff yeah. so i i appreciate you guys taking the time or even thinking to reach out to me because like i do think it's cool being on a bench like show or like a bench centered yeah. thing <laughs> even though i'm full power and like there's there are tons of like breakout female bench pressers out there and like it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger so like i'm happy to just be like yeah let's talk about women's powerlifting and women's benching and how it's growing so i appreciate you guys giving me the platform and like helping me out with questions and stuff to like set me up for those (laughs) things that's really cool it's been our pleasure i mean you are an incredible inspiring lifter and it was an honor to have you on the show and people were super i mean we had several like we saw, you know, several people in the gym and just in passing. They're like, I can't wait for your show tonight. Yep. We're so Aww. excited for your guest. I love Amber. that. She's amazing. Um, that freaking rules. Yeah, one of our That's friends was like, she, he's like, I consider her the most badass person in powerlifting. Yep. Like, you know. Yep. So, yes. <laughs> sad. People I were heard very it. excited to, to see you Aww. on here. So, thank you for it's taking your time. Sweet. and hanging yeah, out with us for guys. a little while here. It's been really fun. Yeah. Really fun getting to chat with Hell you and yeah. pick your brain. and. <laughs> to hear about all your amazingness and yeah i'm sure kyle's waiting for you so he won't keep you longer <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's probably like i got a piece yeah. so bad i've been in the basement this whole time <laughs> all right amber well, well thank we you appreciate and... your time all right, cool. and thank you so bench fun. monster family and we'll do it again next week yes. and everybody have a happy halloween and uh we'll see you back here next week good night amber good night amber good night thank everybody you. bye everybody